All right. Hey, everyone. So today's going to be, uh, I'd say, like a lightning fast uh, uh, talk. So I want to give you a quick sense as to uh, how to implement computer vision models in PyTorch. Uh, what really surprised me recently is like when I started, like I'd never done any sort of serious vision and I was starting to slowly look into it for work. And I was just like shocked at how short some of the code is and how simple some of the models are. And so I thought it'd be a great topic for a stream. So the, the first paper I want to show you is this paper called the UNET. So UNET is an architecture for, convol for image segmentation. Uh, and it sort of has this like, complicated structure where like you have like these uh, convolutions here. Uh, so you'll see that the annotations here are very clear, like these three by three convolutions that are stacked one, of the, one after the other. It's called a double convolution. Then we do some sort of like max pooling operation, then do another double convolution, do another max pool, another double convolution. And here we do this thing called an up convolution, which is basically you basically make the image bigger as opposed to making it smaller. Uh, we append here like the like, like we, we pass in as a signal uh, an, an older part of the model. So it has like some aspects of residual connections like ResNet. Uh, so this seems really complicated, right? Like you look at this and you're like, well, like if I want to implement this like from scratch, just like looking at it, like to me at least it, it didn't really seem uh, all that trivial up until I looked at the actual code for it and I was like actually really shocked how closely it mapped like what this is trying to say. So let me show it to you. So let's take a look at this. So here like in PyTorch typically uh, any model inherits from this thing called uh, any network inherits from like a neural network module. And what you're basically gonna do here is in the initialization phase, you're gonna give names to all of your layers. So the way this will really make sense is here. So you basically, uh, well, first off, we're going to do this thing called ink. And so what's ink? So ink is a double convolution. And we'll take a look at the code for that in a second. Then it's like, okay, well, we're doing like this down operation. Then we're doing another down operation and another one, another one. And here when we're doing the up, we're also taking in x5 and x4. So we're taking in the result at this step, but also, uh, sorry, the result at this step and the result at this step to, to set up the function. So you see like, because like these are just functions, like it almost seems like very easy uh, to think about how to compose them. Um, and so let's take a look at these like one by one, right? So like, let's say, you know, you, you may wonder like, well, double convolution, like that sounds interesting. It sounds complicated. Like maybe I should wait for, I don't know, someone on the PyTorch team to implement it. But then you take a look at it and you're like, well, a double convolution is a sort of a sequential model as in apply these in step. And what you're doing is a con of 2D, a batch normalization, a nonlinear activation, another conf to D, another batch normalization, and another ReLU. So it's literally two convolutions, one after the other. Uh, but like, but but once you feed this, like once you make this a neural network module, you can make this an explicit layer in uh, in, in your PyTorch code. And the advantage of this is that you basically get back propagation on this new function that you've created for free. And basically, the only thing that this is using is uh, code for convolutions, uh, batch normalization, and ReLU. So all three of these, again, like you may think, well, you know, maybe this is complicated. Like a, a like a ReLU is basically, you know, I've talked about ReLU. It's sort of a function that looks like this. It's uh, just zeros out negative values, otherwise keeps the value the same. Uh, batch normalization is making sure all of the batches, all, like all of the elements in a batch at the end of the network have, uh, ha have similar uh, activations like scaled activations uh, and convolutions. Like there's a billion other tutorials about how they work, but you can think of it as like a matrix multiplication where one of the matrices is much smaller and you just slide it. So there's other tutorials that sort of go into this, but that's not really what I wanted to, to go over today. Basically, I want to say like, look, if, if you have these implemented and you know, you can certainly implement these the same way that you could implement the matrix multiplication library, like look at how simple it is to create more complex, more complex architectures with PyTorch. And so let's go back here to the to the paper. So like I said, so we have this double convolution and then at the output channel, uh, it's of size 64, right? But then here, like the input channel is of size 64 and then the output is of size 128 and then 128 till 256. So, so, so all of this is fairly uh, like easy at, at this point. So, you know, let, let's, let's, let's look at what, what this down convolution is about then, like this down operation. Because, you know, maybe that's complicated. But then you look at that and you're like, wait a minute, like this is just a max pool and then a double convolution. So already you can see like, like how we're sort of building up like these new definitions of, of new layers. 
just by making sure that it inherits from neural network module. So like really when it comes to supporting a new layer, all you need to do is create like a forward function for your layer and make put it in a class, make that class inherit from neural network module, and all of a sudden you've created the new layer. I'm not really sure like how, how this would work in TensorFlow, but I have a feeling that it's uh, like more complicated than this. Um, so what about double convolution, right? So let's forget this bilinear thing because this is sort of a fake, uh, this is a this is like a fake convolution. But here what we're basically doing is we're doing this operation called the conf transpose 2D and then we're doing a double convolution. So a conf transpose 2D is basically a convolution where the output image is going to be bigger. And so again here, like we've created this new layer that we've defined as up uh, and we can define the input channel size and the output channel size. Uh, and really here again, like finally at this out convolution operation, well, this is just like a like a regular conf 2D. Uh, so once you've defined all of these layers, like chaining them is just basically like working with functions, right? So you could even like have mapped uh, all of these. And so you're basically saying, well, okay, well first X, like X1 takes X and then X2 takes X1, etc. And the interesting part here where one layer can take multiple inputs is this, this part here. Uh, so for me, this, this was just, generally really surprising. Like I, I had no idea this would be uh, this simple, but it is. And so what I want you to keep in mind as well is that like, well, you know, what about like some other architectures, right? Like let's say, so let's go back to the original. Uh, so this is, this is the UNET model, right? So let's think about this for a second. So what if instead of uh, like instead of saying like well we have this double convolution and a down convolution and down convolution like we just had like a convolution uh, like like convolution where we define a convolution as a, a convolution a, a max pool and then a relu and then we just put a whole bunch of them one after the other well if you do that you basically end up with the VGG architecture like the very uh, like I don't know like very large neural network for vision or something. I like, I forget what it stands for. Uh, another one could be ReLU, right? So like, sorry, not ReLU. Uh, like, like another one could be uh, ResNets. So the different, like ResNets are basically a variation of the VGG network where the inputs of some networks are like of, of one layer is fed into the input of a layer, uh, like is basically skips layers. So let me just show you a picture because this will be uh, very clear. And so the reason why we have like these skip connections in the first place uh, is because like when networks are really deep, like activation sort of like fizzle out, like as you go deeper in, in, in the network. Uh, so here, like, yeah, yeah. So this is it basically. So with ResNet here, typically like you, you would basically have your uh, network go from top to bottom. So like I say, this is a conv, this is a conv, this is a conv. And, you know, looking at the PyTorch code, uh, let me show you. Yeah, so here, like, instead of having, like, let's say these up, 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 uh, your network would just be down, 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 right? So uh, even, like, let's say you had a ResNet block, you could just replace it here and then have that be the, the encoder part of, of your of your unit. Uh, and so, like, again, so if you're doing a VGG network, all you would do is instead of having, like, ups, you would just delete this whole part. You would have, like, a, a bunch of down convolutions uh, here. And maybe instead of down, like, it could just be a regular, like... It, like here, like, let me show it to you. So if you look at this double convolution, it has the conf 2D, it has a batch norm, it has a relu, then conf 2D, batch norm, relu. Uh, you would just delete this part and then you end up with one convolution, like just the, like one convolutional block. And then if you put a whole bunch of these where you change the input and output channels to make it slowly uh, smaller, starting from a very large size, you end up with VGG. And if you also make sure to integrate past inputs into, uh, like if you make sure to integrate the output of older layers into newer layers, uh, you end up with ResNet. And so if you, and, and, and again, like back to UNET, like if, if you have the sort of down then up architecture, uh, you end up with something like UNET. And so uh, like basically the, the takeaway here is that uh, if you have nice building blocks for uh, convolutional neural networks, as in all you need is like a convolutional like operation, a max pooling operation, and a relu operation. If you have those, you can with PyTorch construct these like arbitrarily complex uh, computer vision architectures and get BRAC propagation for free as long as your class inherits from a neural network module and implements a forward function which determines the forward propagation. Uh, so remember, uh, a convolution is also just a matrix multiplication and a bunch of matrix multiplications 
and a sequential is just basically a sequence of linear maps. So you can automatically differentiate this for essentially for free. Uh, and so I hope this encourages you to experiment with your own computer vision architectures because often it's sort of like these small insights that end up becoming very popular research contributions. Like the, the code basically already exists for all of this, uh, but but the, the researchers that created UNET were really the first to, to see the value in putting it this way. And so the more you're going to experiment, the more you're going to learn, the more architectures you're going to get, and the more likely you are to have some sort of interesting research contribution. So I hope this was interesting. I may end up doing more uh, PyTorch tutorials tomorrow, or maybe Jax, we'll see. Uh, so stay tuned, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks, everyone.